hello and welcome back to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Cedric Hughes, and today I'm joined by two special guests. Zoe Wahavinge. Hi, I'm Daniel Ostrom. Today, we'll be discussing the power outages brought on by PG&E. But first, let's turn to members of the community and see what they have to say. So, what's your opinion on the PG&E uh, power shutoffs? I mean, it really sucks. They control like all of Northern California, so whenever anything happens, everyone's screwed. So, yeah. Do you think that there's a better way to um, prevent fires that they could approach? Um, I mean, I'm not an expert, but probably there's got to be a better way because it's, it's kind of crazy. When fire season comes around, it's like nonstop, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's quite disappointing because, you know, we all need our utilities. This uh, past day I had my hot water shut off, you know, and uh, I ain't trying to shower with some cold water. I know some people do that, but I just um, have to change my whole life routine, you know. I wanted to go play ball, but I, ain't, I don't have a shower, so couldn't do that, so I just had to, you know, stay home. So it's pretty, it's a pain in the ass, you know, but I guess... Uh, that stuff's complicated, so what it, I don't really know how that stuff's going to get fixed, but hopefully it gets fixed soon. Um, I feel like there was like a better way to combat the problem. It feels like they kind of just took the easy way out, and there were still like fires, so I don't really understand why they needed to do that. And it like caused a lot of problems, and I heard like at Berkeley, it caused like the labs, the cells being grown in the labs there, like they all died because they were like being stored in the fridges there so when the power went off it killed them. So I think it's like super unfortunate that they had to do that and there was probably like a better way to go about it. PG&E power shutoffs. Ooh, I got to be completely honest with you, man. I don't really know because I don't really know what areas they're doing it, what the context is, what the climate's doing. There's a lot of shit going on that I don't know about. So, um, like how you mentioned that you don't know what areas it's taking place in, do you think that they should be more vocal, I guess, about wh uh, where the power is going to be shut off? If, like, Yeah, maybe vocal wouldn't be the word that I would choose, though. Maybe more receptive to the needs of the community. Um, I think that's always a good way to go. Talk to the community, see, see what, what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, rather than be like, yo! Boom, 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 boom. Well, I didn't have my power shut off, so um, that was good. Um, I think it may very well have been something that uh, could have that, that did prevent a couple of fires, but on the other hand, I think they need to make an effort to do a lot more positive things as well and really show us that they're trying to fix the problem and not just, you know, have more and more power outages. Well, we heard a lot of very interesting opinions from members of the community. Uh, Zoe, Daniel, what do you guys think? <clears throat> I feel like what the last woman said was really interesting, that she wants more positive things to happen, but I feel like sometimes just more preventative ne measures are necessary. She says she wants things that will actively help the problem, but sometimes that's just not as easily accessible. So with these power shutouts, they're not the most convenient, but... Um, I would have to disagree with her in the sense that I do think that they are a necessary thing to happen. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Zoe here. I really think that the power outages, it's not just because they don't want to deal with the problem. It's because they need to take these preventative measures to prevent it in the future. And they can't do that while these lines are live. And it just, it creates issues while they can't fix it while the problem is still occurring. So they need to put a put a hold on it until they can actually develop something to fix the problem and develop something to um, prevent it in the future. And I think these immediate pro the immediate um, preventative measures of shutting down the power, shutting down um, gas lines, it's because they need to do that at this point. That's what's necessary. And I think a lot of people who are sort of saying, well, they need to turn the power, it's, it sucks. Yeah, it does suck. But the problem is, you can't just fix the problem by waiting for, by trying to fix it and not taking immediate preventative measures because developing that stuff takes time and in that time it's very likely that fires will start. 
For sure, yeah. I, I mean, in the uh, interviews mm -hmm. with the community, we heard a lot about the impacts that it's been having, both you know from uh, impacts on everyday lives of citizens to more industrial impacts, such as those on the economy, or um, we heard one woman talk about uh, impacts on research going on at UC Berkeley. So uh, do you think that you know even in light of the impacts, it was still worth it for PG&E to shut off the power? I, I think it's a difficult question, especially because um, a, a lot of farming industry has suffered because of it, because they don't have the resources to run their farms, to run um, a, her story about um, a milk farm. They couldn't run because they didn't have the energy and they didn't know when they would have power. They didn't know when it would be shut off. But on the other hand, if they didn't do the power shutoffs, that farm wouldn't be there. <laughs> I mean, there's a very possible, um, it, it's a possibility that that farm wouldn't even be there for them to have those problems had they not shut off the power. I think, yes, it does have impacts on daily life. I think some of the points about people in Davis having impacts is sort of a moot point because the power shutoffs have not been in the Davis area. Mm -hmm. um, Davis, it's primarily been because of issues that pg and &E is having. It hasn't been the power shutoffs, so I think that's a little, um, not exactly, it doesn't exactly pertain to the issue. But I think that it's just, to say that, I, I, I don't know, Zoe, what, what do you think? Um, I feel like that while these uh, measures are still necessary, um, I feel like California is not doing the best job at helping out the people who have been affected by this. Um, whether it's daily life functions, um, like what was it, so, um, that guy who mentioned that he was showering, and then, um, yeah, um, UC Davis Lab and businesses. It's, um, they're not doing a very good job at helping that out. They're just kind of like, deal with that on your own. And that I get, they can't spend all of their time helping out each and every individual, but it's just, um, these power outages are, as far as I know, they're catered to the people that can afford batteries, that can af that just, um, they can afford the means to go without power for a little while. Like there are some people who might be less fortunate and might not have that money or time to put into dealing with well, the power Well, I'm outage. interested, what do you think that they should be doing to help those people then? Um, that's a good question. I think, um, potentially like distributing, um, distributing batteries mm -hmm. or just something The I, I know water is a really big issue. I don't know what they would be able to do there, but they would pr probably provide like rations of water per se that you can take home. Cause I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's just, I know that's a really big concern that we all have. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it is estimated that these power outages are costing the California economy some $2 billion. So, you know, we are seeing that, like you said, Daniel, it is important um, that these shutoffs are happening to prevent disasters like the campfire that we saw last year. So we want to prevent those things. And I, I think that it was a really interesting point that you brought up about the farm, right? That the detriments that we're seeing are very real and that it is costing these small-time farmers and small-time businesses. But the question that we have to pose is, would they be there at all if it weren't for these power outages in the midst of this fire season? And I would say it's not just small town farmers. It's not just small businesses. It is larger businesses and larger industries that are being affected. That was just an example of yeah. a smaller industry. But all industries in California that rely on electricity, that rely on water, that rely on gas, those it's really difficult for them to have those resources. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about gas and water. I don't know if those are being shut off in some of the areas. Um, but I know that electricity is very important to a lot of these um, industries. And without it, they can't run. And I mean, I'm just supporting yeah. your point and my own point. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not just smaller businesses. It is a wide range. So yes, I think it is very detrimental to have these power shutoffs. But what's the alternative? Yeah, and, and I think that that is a really interesting question to pose. And, and I think that's the one that our communities have to tackle next because PG&E as a company has some 81,000 miles of power lines running above California. Mm -hmm. So when we see, you know, the extents that the uh, the extents that these lines run and just how, how big the problem is that PG&E has to deal with, you know, there is no quick and easy solution and even small scale preventative measures such as clearing uh, dead wood out from these power lines can take days. Um, so moving forward, I think the question is what do we do about that? Zoe? Um, unfortunately, I only know so much about this. So is it all right if I 
bring this to? Oh, I don't know what we should do going forward. I think going forward, that's um, definitely a question for PG&E. And I think that's why they're making these efforts now. And I think one of the main problems that people are having is that PG&E spent years just sort of pleasing their shareholders, yeah. making sure that everyone had enough money and not taking enough measures to prevent this before it's happened. And now that it's become such an important issue, um, especially with pick, uh, winds just picking up in the California area, taking down lines, and they don't have these preventative measures, they, it's, people are mad because of that. But I think the problem is a lot of people, you run PG&E out, you get PG&E out of there, what you going to do then? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no backup plan in place. For sure. And I think PG&E needs to solve their own problems. I, I can't say what I think the move should be. Should we get rid of PG&E? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anything should be done until, <laughs> I mean, again, I'm not an expert, but I don't think anything should be done until PG&E can figure out it figure it out at this point because another company is going to come in, get PG&E out, another company is going to come in, how different are they going to be from PG&E? Yeah. Are they really going to make any changes? Are they really going to take any preventative measures? You don't know. And most businesses are built around pleasing stockholders, making sure that everyone has enough money. And putting that effort into doing that instead of um, protecting lines, be instead of taking preventative measures so that fires like this don't happen, it's not just a PG&E problem, it's a universal problem. Of course. I, yeah, I think it's just, it's a company, <laughs> it's a company problem, it's not a specific, sorry, it's more of an industry problem than a specific company problem. Mm -hmm. I okay. guess, um, from my personal perspective, I actually haven't faced these PG&E power outs, and even if I have, it would just be my own um, comfort struggles, like, oh, I can't charge an electric device of mine, or, oh, I can't get my boiling water. For me, it would not be something as significant as I might not be able to pay bills this month. Yeah. I might not be able to um, feed family members this month. So I guess, um, I guess I'm just taking into account that my perspective is a lot, is I guess a lot more limited than these companies or maybe, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, Zoe, I think that that's really interesting that, you know, you're talking about the scale of impacts, right? You know, for some, it is a matter of just comfort, you know, like the, the man in the interview was talking about um, showers. But for others, um, you know, like you said, Daniel, both small and big businesses alike, um, you know, some can't afford to run generators when powers are out. And, you know, some uh, can't afford to sustainably run that. So they are faced with a lack of electricity, so they can't run their businesses. So we're seeing impacts on everyday lives of people, but also on the work and you know the ability to pay rent and pay bills. So you know it is a serious issue. And I think that it was mentioned in the interviews and moving forward of things that can be done. Um, one thing that people touched on was preventative maintenance. And you talked about this too, Zoe. And I think that that is something uh, that was really interesting that was brought up because, you know, even though we see that it isn't necessarily always easy and that it isn't, you know, it's not just a quick fix, it's not just a quick fix, but they're, you know, doing things like clearing dead wood from power lines and ensuring that the lines are up to code. You know, things like that can prevent things like the campfire from happening. So I think moving forward, you know, what do you think about these preventative um, maintenance measures? And do you think that there could be anything done besides, you know, clearing dead lines or making sure lines are up to code? Um, anything else that could be done? Um. I feel like um, where it is currently right now and what people have the patience, the time, and the money for, I really feel like this was this is the most effective way to deal with these fires in terms of cutting out lines. Like, I get that it's inconvenient, but it's what's more inconvenient is a burned down state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so we only have a few minutes left in today's episode. So I'd just like to, uh, to cover one last thing that Daniel brought up, um, and that was without PG&E, where do we go? Right, so you said that there are inherent problems with the system, but before outing you know, PG&E and getting rid of it, we need to understand what we would be doing instead. So after the power outages, lots of alternative companies like um, Sunrun, which uh, is a solar power company, they came in and they were making statements saying that it was time for old companies like PG&E to end and it was time for renewable energy to take over. So what do you think of that, of renewable energy taking over the sector to reduce these problems? I fully believe that renewable energy um, could definitely help, but that still doesn't solve the problem that we're currently in because energy is still power, it's still sent through lines. It's not sent through just having it at your house. I think that's 
one of the main problems. It's not just an issue of where the energy is coming from. I fully believe in renewable energy, but I don't believe that renewable energy is, and the fact that PG&E isn't necessarily using renewable energy, that's not the problem. The problem is the cables. The problem is not keeping these areas safe. I'm, yeah, it's yeah. not a matter of what kind of energy is being used. Yeah. Um, California is already, uh, granted not renewable, but California is very strict with um, energy and making sure that it's clean, well, clean versus certain other fossil fuels, other things that people use. And California is very conscious of this. And so I think that's really difficult to say, oh, renewable energy is going to fix this whole problem because that's not the problem. I, well, from what I know from the situation, that's not the problem. Yeah. So I think, you know, moving forward, it's clear that we do have a problem. It's clear that there are inherent detriments in the system. And, you know, I think just from this discussion, we can see that there is no easy, you know, easy fix to it. So it's going to require many more discussions just like these, um, as well as actions by companies um, and the government as, as well um, to fix these problems. So I think it'll be really interesting to see where we go in the next few years. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.